Hello my dear friends, welcome to Java programming playlist. In this video, we are going to see the try catch statement in Java programming. In the previous video, we have seen the exceptions and type of exceptions. Here we will see the try catch statement that is used to handle those exceptions, starting with first the try block. Java try block is used to enclose the code that might throw exception. So we are writing a try block to enclose the code which might throw an exception. The catch block. Java catch block is used to handle the exception. It must be used after try block only. So we cannot have only catch statement. There should be a try block. In that we are writing the code which should be having the code which can raise an exception or which can throw an exception. The catch block that follows try is executed if the type of exception that has occurred is listed in the catch block and then the exception is handed over to the catch block to handle it. My dear friends, first we have the try block in that we have some code which may raise the exception. Now if the exception is occurred, then it will be first checking that what all catch blocks are there after this try block. Now among those all catch blocks, the block which is handling that particular exception will only be called to handle the exception. If there is no catch block handling the exception, then the compiler will give us an error saying that this exception may rise. It should be handled by a catch block. You can use multiple cache with a single try. So this is what I have already said that with a try you can have multiple catch blocks handling multiple types of exceptions. Let us see what else is the syntax of try catch block. So here is this try block. There inside this try block we write the protected code. After this try block, there is this catch block which is handling the exception of type exception name E1. Then we have exception name E1 or it can be E2. It is the object of exception name. What differs here is exception name. So there can be an exception of type arithmetic exception here and the second could be a null pointer exception. There are multiple types of exceptions that we have already seen. So you can write multiple catch blocks if those type of exceptions may raise in this try block. In the above syntax, there are two catch blocks. We write code that might generate an exception by protected code. Then the exception is thrown to the first catch block. So first what is done is when the exception is thrown, it will try to match with the first catch block that is the exception name with the first block. If this exception name is able to handle that particular raised exception, then it will enter this catch block Else, it will try matching the catch block that is after that or, or the second catch block and then the third catch block and so on. If the data type of exception thrown matches exception name E1, it gets caught there and caught and executed the catch block. If not, the exception passed down to the second catch block and so on. This continues until the exception either is caught or falls through all catches. In that case, the current method stops the execution. My dear friends, why we are handling the exception is just to handle the situation where the program code, the entire code does not get in, gets into a 
stop stage or the halt stage. If we handle the exception successfully, the program will continue after the try catch block or the next program counter. This will get more clear when we will see an example. So here is the example. We have this demo try catch class, public static void main. Then we have this try block, then catch and catch. So we are having two catch block and uh, for this particular try block. So here we have this array declared with three member variables or items that is one, two, three. And the next statement is a of three is equal to three divided by zero. So my dear friends, here we can see there are three items in this. So we will have array index 0, 1, 2, 3. And if we write here a of 3, so that means that does not exist because we have 0, 1, 2 uh, and a of 3 does not exist. And 3 divided by 0, it is again an arithmetic exception. So there are two types of exceptions that could be raised here. Uh, first is the arithmetic exception which is saying divide by 0 if that is caught and another is array index out of bound exception because we have an array of size 3 that is 0, 1, 2 are the index and we are trying to write something at a of 3 then it will say array index out of bound exception. So if we compile and execute this let us see what will be the output. So here the output will be divided by 0 because the first exception that will be handled is arithmetic exception and here is the method which is saying that system.out.println divided by 0 and the exception that is divided by 0. Now we can have nested try catch that means we can have a try catch within the try catch. Let us see how we can write that. In Java, the try block within a try block is known as a nested try block. Nested try block is used when a part of block may cause one error while the entire block may cause another error. So if we want to handle the exceptions separately inside the try block, so what we can write is we can write a try catch block within a try catch or within a try block. In that case, if the inner try block does not have a catch handle for a particular exception, then the outer try is checked for the match. So what will happen is it is just like multiple catch statement, but the priority is given to the inner catch block. If that is not able to handle the exception, the exception will be thrown to the outer catch blocks. This continues until one of the catch statements succeeds or until the entire nested try statement are done. If no one catches the statement or matches the statement, then Java runtime system will handle the exception, but in that case, the program will stop. So here is an example of nested try. So we have try, then we have the statement one, then try which having some protected code, then exception, exception name E1, catch block one. And then we are closing this try, the outer try is closed. And then we have this catch. So this try is having this catch and outer try is having this catch with the exception name E2. This is the catch block. I hope this is clear my dear friends. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more videos on Java programming.